Are gamers too demanding? Do they expect way too much out of these new releases? And are they ungrateful and unappreciative of the hard work that goes into the development of these games? Well, we're going to attempt to answer that question in today's video because that's a common criticism that you hear of the video game community is that they're way too demanding, they expect way too much out of developers, and it can never be satisfied because their expectations are set way too high. So it doesn't matter how much effort and how much money developers have put into these projects, gamers will always find something to bitch and complain about because they're so ungrateful. That's a common criticism that you hear very often about the video game community, that they don't have enough respect for developers. But I would argue that it's actually the other way around. I don't think developers and publishers have enough respect for the gamer. But that's coming from the perspective of someone who's been playing video games for over 18 years, so I guess my perspective would be a little bit biased in that case. Because I'm one of those demanding gamers. And I don't really see anything wrong with that. If I'm expected to lay down $60, $70 now for a new video game, then in return, I expect to get as much of my money's worth as possible. And with these shitty AAA releases, I just don't see it being worth $60, definitely not $70, but even $60 I think is too much for most of these games that release in an unfinished, broken state. Because the thing is, that's the modern philosophy of the video game industry, is to release a game even if it's not finished, and just update it later because now we have this whole gimmick of every video game being a live service. So yeah, you can release a game that doesn't have a lot of content at launch, but you can just add that content in later and eventually, a year, two years, three years later, it will be a good game. But you still have to pay $60 right now because, well, we need your money. And I just can't support that. So I refuse to buy pretty much any modern AAA release. The last game I bought new at launch was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, and I regretted that because that game is the worst Call of Duty game ever made in my opinion. It's just a really bad game. Definitely not worth $60, and I think the last new game I bought before that was Red Dead Redemption 2 in 2018, so it, I practice what I preach. I'm not the type of guy that just bitches and complains on the internet, but does the exact opposite. Because people like that, they're the reason why gamers are taken advantage of, and I truly believe that gamers the problem isn't that they're too demanding, it's that they're not demanding enough. Because yeah, you have a lot of people that bitch and complain on Twitter, Reddit, whatever about all these games that come out, but they still buy them, they still support the developers, so if they already pay the developers and publishers the money and continue to buy these new releases, continue to buy all the sequels, all the DLCs, even loot boxes, then you're not giving these developers any reason to change their practices. And if you've been subbed to the channel for a while, you know that's a point that I really try to hit home, that I really try to emphasize with my viewers that if you want things to change, vote with your wallet. But the thing is, most people don't do that. And the numbers show. These games still sell millions upon millions of copies. These big AAA publishers, your Ubisofts, Electronic Arts, Activision, they keep generating more and more revenue each year. So how exactly are gamers too demanding if they seemingly support these developers and publishers no matter what? They keep giving them more money, so how exactly are they more demanding? And I don't even know if you can spin it as these greedy developers that try to milk you dry and try to get as much money out of you as possible. Well, the thing is, it works. They're a corporation, they're a business, so of course they're going to do anything they can to maximize profits. So I really don't blame them for doing everything they can to make money because, well, guess what? The sad truth is it's working. Whether you like it or not, a lot of these shady business practices, they're here to stay because people continue to support them. The microtransactions, the loot boxes, releasing an unfinished game. People still pre-order them. So why should developers make a strong effort to make the game as great as possible if people just buy the game anyway? So even though I'm one to bitch and complain about how shitty these games are, about how awful AAA gaming is, how modern gaming in general is just awful, I blame the consumer more than anybody else, more than the greedy publishers and developers, because guess what? That's their purpose. It's to make money. They're businesses. And I understand that. So if people keep throwing money at them, why should they stop? Why should these publishers get rid of microtransactions, get rid of loot boxes, if people keep buying them, people keep supporting these games? And when I get frustrated with the current state of the gaming industry, I focus my frustrations towards the average consumer, to the gamer, that keeps supporting this shit, that keeps supporting these shitty business practices. Because they're the ones responsible. If we all said, fuck you, we're not buying your game, yeah, a lot would change in the gaming industry. But the fact of the matter is you have way too many people that are just content and don't have their expectations set high enough. So yeah, I don't think gamers are demanding enough. I don't think that they should demand less out of their games. They should definitely demand more. 
because we've been getting less for way too long. I remember a time, which seems like a lifetime ago, when you buy a game and it's a finished game. There's no patches, no live service. What you get is what you get. And I think it was better back then because it put the pressure on developers to make sure the game was as good as it possibly could be because they couldn't patch it and update it later. And people say, how are you against updates and patches? Isn't it a great thing that developers can actually fix the game after release? And I guess on the surface level, that makes a lot of sense. But when you think about it, if a game has all these fundamental problems, it should not be released in the first place. If it needs to get patched, then it's not ready for release. But now this early access model, remember back in the 2013, 2014 period where you had all these survival horror games like DayZ, Rust that were in early access? Well, that was the blueprint for what would become the modern AAA gaming industry. Because these days, it seems like all the big AAA releases are in early access, even single player games. And that's the sad truth. Finding a finished game at launch is a rarity these days. But I guess I'm being too demanding because that's something I came to expect back in the PS2, PS3 days for a game to actually be finished when it launches. Sure, you had a lot of messes. You had Skyrim back in the day, especially on PS3. Oh my god, that was terrible. So yeah, you had a lot of games back in the 7th gen that were also broken and unfinished. But I feel like this generation, it's a lot more of a common thing. But in the age of a live service, I'm just supposed to be patient and wait for the developer to get around to making the game good and finished. And I just think that's bullshit, so I never buy new games, almost ever. I only bought two games brand new over the past two years for $60. Because I don't think most games are even worth that price. And even if it's an online game that's past its prime after six months to a year, at least I get to play a finished game when they finally finish with all the updates. And I just have no problem waiting, but I think $60 for most of these games, that's a ridiculous asking price. And $70? Forget it. I will never spend $70 for any game. Because even if it's a really good game, I just don't find video games worth $60, never mind $70. But then a common criticism you hear about people like me is that we're too demanding. We should be grateful that games cost $70, never mind $80, $90, because... The cost of video games, you know, games are so much more expensive to develop now, and it's only fair for them to raise the price on you, even though the quality of the games have objectively gone downhill over the past 5 to 10 years. You can't tell me that today's AAA releases are anywhere near as good as they were back in 2010. So we're expected to pay more money for less quality? Back then we didn't have loot boxes, yeah we had a lot of bullshit, you had on disc DLC, online passes, don't get me wrong, it's not like 2010 was perfect. But you had a lot more high quality single player and online multiplayer experiences than you do today. But I'm still expected to pay more money for games now? Fuck that. And fuck these so-called video game journalists that never stick up for us, the consumer. I thought the whole purpose of being a journalist was to stick out for the common person and to be a watchdog for the people. Like whenever something shady is going on with the government or with corporations, they inform the public about what's going on and they look out for us, but that's really not the case these days with any journalist, but especially video game journalists, they don't give a fuck about the consumer. They're in bed with these corporations, because all the articles I've been seeing, you should have no problem paying $70 for games. These poor developers have to spend more money on development, and they can't raise their prices? You're greedy and selfish if you don't want to pay 10 more dollars for your games. And that's all I've been hearing from these so-called journalists. And I think that's fucking disgusting, because they're only telling one side of the story. Because yeah, on one hand, the cost of development is going up, inflation goes up over the years, and you would think over the years you would pay more for games, but you know what isn't going up? Wages aren't going up. People right now in their 20s and 30s, they're the first generation in a long time to be worse off than their parents. Because despite that inflation rate going up and everything going up, costs going up, wages have stagnated over the past 40 years. And currently we're in the most devastating economic recession that we've had in a long time since the Great Depression in the 20s. But people should have no problem forking over 10 extra dollars for new games. Fuck you. But then the other argument you hear from industry insiders, these investors and journalists, all people that have ulterior motives, by the way, they want you to keep buying more games because that fills their pockets. And that's all they really care about. They don't care about the average person. So when they say every game is worth $60 because for X hours of entertainment, compared to spending $15 on a movie ticket for a two hour film, you can spend $60 or $70 on a 20 hour, 50 hour, 100 hour, 200 hour game. And because of that, it's still a great value. Now that's the word they keep throwing in your face. Value, value, value. But the truth is, if there's a big game, an online game that has 100 hours, 200 hours of content, 
most of the content in that game is you just grinding and doing the same repetitive missions over and over and over again. At least with a film, you have a definitive beginning, middle, and end. You know, unless you're watching like a Tarantino film or something. But you know what I mean. Like, just because something has X amount of hours in it doesn't mean that the value is equal to a dollar amount. Like, one hour equals X dollars of entertainment. That's not what it means as much as the actual quality of those hours you're spending. And with most of these AAA games, the quality is not good. So it doesn't matter how many hours of content it has on paper, because again, most of those hours are boring and repetitive. It's just bad logic that they try to use into fooling you to say, oh, $60, $70, that's a really good value for games. And the sad truth is most people fall for that shit. But going back to the comparison with movies, there's a big difference between paying $15 for a ticket to see The Joker and $15 to see Left Behind starring Nicolas Cage. You know what I mean? And not to mention, if you want to stream movies and TV shows, you pay, what, like $11, $12 a month and you literally get tens of thousands of hours of entertainment? So that's just not a good argument. But unfortunately, there are a lot of people that fall for it and think, yeah, it's worth $60, $70 for these shitty games. And that's the big problem in the gaming community. Not that gamers are too demanding, but they're not demanding enough. They should demand more out of their games. They should demand the end of these greedy monetization practices. And they should demand for a game to actually be finished and playable on launch day. Look, we can keep bitching and complaining on Twitter, Reddit, and all these social media platforms about how downhill gaming has gone over the years, but we really have nobody but ourselves to blame. Yeah, these corporations are greedy, but they're greedy by design, and they only keep pulling off this shit because we keep supporting them financially. So we need to stop eating shit and stand up for ourselves as consumers. That's the only way things will ever get better.